Bhargav. La Global Foundation, a non-profit organization, is working towards the holistic development of the people across health, education, water, sanitation, and economic development by creating a scalable, replicable, and community-centric model of sustainable development. In accordance with the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, at La Global Foundation, we believe that the partnership with corporates, Young Urban India, the government, and other foundation is the key to create a permanent change for good. Under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Minakshi Sahani, founder La Global Foundation, aspires to impact one million lives by SDG 2030, leaving no one behind. Before starting our mega event, let's take a moment to welcome our distinguished guest of honor, Dr. Madhav Marari Dasji, senior escort devotee from Russia. Let's give a big clap for her, him. Dr. Rajan Sudesh, Deputy Head and Senior Economic Affairs Officer, United Nations SCAP, Mrs. Sudesh Chatta, Treasurer, La Global Foundation. Dr. Gaganesh Sharma, serving as a director in National Center of Organic and Natural Farm in Ghazabad, UP. Dr. Amrish Saxena, Professor and Dean, Delhi Metropolitan Education. And Dr. Menakshi Sahani, Founder President, La Global Foundation. So now it's time to welcome each other with a big round of applause and I'm so happy to welcome you here. Hare Hare, 
while the theme is SDT 8, uh, but what is important and where this SDT 8 feeds into is the SDT 5, which is about equality of women. Equality of women economically, equality of women socially, and equality of women, which is all inclusive. Uh, and it is indeed uh, for me and UNESCO uh, to be privileged to be associated with La Global Foundation. Uh, and uh, being here is a pleasure to see you all uh, with such fun and excitement. Uh, also, uh, I know Minakshi Ji, I shouldn't praise too much, but a little bit of God is required. I have seen her. Her dedication, her enthusiasm, and perseverance. Whenever you want to work, uh, we look into South and Southwest Asia, 10 countries, and they have everything under the sun which you can imagine. We work with Turkey, which looks into the European Union, but more advanced. We also look into Iran, which faces a part of the rest of the world. We work with Afghanistan, and we all know where we stand in the position of women there. We work for Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives, and Bhutan. Each country has a different perspective towards women. And we all need uh, different solutions, different interventions uh, to make this event or these kind of exercises successful. And I'm so happy that she's trying to get different, diverse sect of people coming from different sector uh, to work towards one objective of women empowerment, uh, which will also run through SDGA. I wish you all a very, very successful and a happy event. Thank you very much. So much it's an indeed and blessing to listen to you and your thoughts uh, I like to call uh, mr. Ravi Kaushal ji the chief manager State Bank of India a round of applause for Ravi Kaushal ji he would be the man you know the right person to provide us the knowledge of all the awareness and welfare schemes Sir, I really would like to listen. I think the entire audience is waiting for your thought process. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, as the uh, Rashi Ji introduced uh, me, I am from State Bank of India, State Manager. My name is Ravi Kaushal. And uh, first of all, I would uh, like to thank uh, Ms. Rashi Sandhi Ji for inviting me here. Because this is the forum where we can communicate about the bank as well as understand what the others are doing so that we can fulfill their financial ambitions and uh, make our country prosper and develop. And uh, as well, rightly, uh, the objective of this program, uh, I'd like to thank La Global Foundation who are really thinking about the women empowerment. And because earlier, this was not the situation. If we go back 15 or 20 years back, nobody was thinking. You know, means, uh, but a woman is said to be the better off of any family. But right now, in the right perspective, the people by and large have started thinking. And talking about in India, the same thing is going towards the developing country as well. Because we are saying the, the whole family or the whole economy is made up of two wheels. If the male wheel is revolving at a particular speed, the female side also should revolve at the same speed, then only the perfect synchronization of the vehicle will come. So that's why it is really appreciable the effort of this particular foundation towards this. As rightly said, it is a part of SDG goal. And now talking about my bank side, so we have a different schemes. Our schemes starting from right from the very as low as 10,000 rupees, we go up to the 10,000 crores. So we have a loan from the 10,000, anybody, any, because when we talk about uh, our uh, uh, statement of India, if I talk about it, the oldest bank, the age of the bank is 217 years. 
I need to talk about my department because I mean, I most of you, if you think about the bank, you will think if you going to a particular bank means depositing your money, taking out your money, transferring your money from one nation to other. So this is the bank is all about. But if I talk about my particular department, so the purpose itself is about the development because this department it was uh, established 50 years back. The name of the department is Consultancy Services Cell because our nation it uh, got independence in 1947. So in 1969, when our country thought of uh, nationalization of the banks, by that time only the affluent people. Right now you might be understanding the names of Ambani and Adani. So by that time it was Tata and Birla. So banks were maintaining the accounts of only those rich people, and the whole the majority of the population were not linked to the banking system. That's why the government was taking place. So by that time my department was established and the engineers were recruited. So the idea was the hand holding. So I really appreciate the bank's approach and the bank is not only thinking about getting the fund but hand holding because this is the most important thing needed right now. Because we have seen so many enterprises, entrepreneurs, those who want to start this startup but when they go to the bank, the failure comes back. If you go to most of the seminars, even you know, the government, Ministry of Finance, also they are talking about this. Okay, why the requirement of the credit is that much? Almost 20, 20 lakh crores or so, but the banks are funding very, very less. So the the, the, the problem lies between the communication. The entrepreneur, or the startup, they are not able to communicate their idea to the bank. So that's why where we come into the picture. So we have uh, our cell who are uh, inviting entrepreneurs and startups, those who are having the business, uh, any business idea in their mind, they want to start a business, any business, so they can come to us, we will be handholding them, we will tell you, okay, these are the approvals required, these are the risk perception of the industry, and if it is possible, we will try to get the finance from our bank, or if it is possible, if we take, want to avail the finance from any other uh, financial institution, we can go to that. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable uh, ideas and information about it and I hope we all will get benefit uh, out of this and now it's a time to share something beautiful with you all it's okay so let's keep it as a surprise now I would like to call Dr. Minachi Sani for her presentation ma'am thank you so much please come First of all, I'd like to acknowledge all of you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, to your presence is really delightful. It's unconditional support for the LA Global Foundation. And the entire fraternity would like to say thank you. Thank you, everyone. So, I'd like to start a small gist of our work. And uh, we are successfully completing three and a half years of the foundation. It's a registered charitable trust NGO with 12A and ATG. And the major impactful creations has been done by us is strengthening and empowering the community on education on a grassroots levels. We supported various education sectors, not only in rural India, but as well as the urban India. We had adopted few schools that uh, you know we are trying to uplift and handhold them in education and curriculum building. Impact 2. Advocating the issues pertaining to the health imbalances, the first, uh, you know, season one I like to highlight, we have been got the support from all the pharmaceuticals, max group of hospitals on the topic breast cancer. We had detected uh, 100 plus uh, cancer uh, on the first stage. So that was the great success of the season one working on the breast cancer awareness campaign. Thank you. And we try to support the life of millions. We are trying to support with your kind blessings. We have impact three. Joining the hands to promote the socio-economic development of the community. We've been empowering the women not only on the community, creating community for them, creating networking not only national level but international level also. Uh, 
and we are accessing to the corporate network for all of them. We are providing the government welfare schemes and trying to give them financial assistance time to time and handhold them. We have boot camps regularly and the workshops on the same topics and same cause. We are, we do have the senior consultant teams with us for the mentorship and coaching facilities also. Our mission, you can see, like we can all say this, this is my symbol. You know, this is powerful, this is strong. Let's do it once again, everyone, because I always believe that the interaction, you know, believing yourself is being the strength itself, you know, so that's what the mission all about. Undertaking, organizing, conducting and facilitating the conferences, lectures, workshop, as I did mention, and we have already domain the focus area are the health, fitness that is much more needed for, for the time right now. Physical education, science and technology, skill building in sports. So how, how many of you are been doing something or the activity in the sports? Can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand? Awesome, awesome. I really want next time in season 4 we will all say yes. Yes, we like to be in sports, we like to be in art, we like to facilitate ourselves in cultural activity, waste management, leadership and motivational factors, definitely. So, you know, I really want the mission is not going to accomplish me taking a blow. It's all of us together. Do you believe me? Yes. Do you believe me? Yes. Thank you. This is my message for the entire world, but I think I'm providing the message very well, so let's go to the next. My message is like, you know, building up the community, the strong world together, living life powerfully. That's my tagline of LA Global Foundation. The more power you have, the more world will get accomplished. You, you can stay with me. Accomplishing. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So that's the strength. They are my ambassadors. We are focusing on 17 sustainable development goals. I think we are the only foundation who is not only having one, one goal focus, but we are trying to support Nigeria, Lagos. We have Wu Foundation with us. We have USA, California, who are supporting time to time from Direct United Nations Global Compact. Uh, you know, uh, TV channels, social communities are been there with us. We have Canada. The Canada is entirely supporting us in climate building, uh, climate condition, environment workshops, and you know, we've been having a lot of knowledge with the researcher team. I'm feeling blessed that we had Dr. Rekha Singh today, and she's been the founder of the, and she'll be talking about the climate action that has been changed, you know, for the inclusive areas of the uh, United Nations. All right, so I think we all know what is goal number one. What is SDG goal number one? Let's educate ourselves because we've been inviting all of you for the leadership summit and we are talking about SDGs. So I think this is a glimpse of for all of you to have a knowledge. What is goal number one? Goal number one is no poverty and building forward together. Next, goal number two, we'll be having any poverty. Let's have a flex together.
so I'm bad. <laughs> All right, Ibrahim, I like to, you to repeat this. Goal number four: quality education. Yes. Come to goal number five: gender equality. See, we all are. I, I really want. Okay, one minute exercise. In this room, there are not many people who does not know their names or probably their culture or probably they do not know who is who. Let's do this activity for the gender equality. Get up, everyone. Let's get up, everyone. Everyone, all of you. Okay, so for a minute, we will go and seek blessings and shaking hands with everybody and, you know, please introduce yourself for a minute. This is an activity for gender equality. Let's move around. Highlighting the goal number six right now. Very important for our environment, safe environment, clean water and sanitation, ensuring the availability, sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Coming to the goal number seven. energy right let's ensure the access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all let's have a round of applause because this is B you need to ensure you need to ensure the accessibility of the affordable reliable sustainable energy for all let's come to the goal number eight decent work and that's what global leadership summit 2023 Okay, so I just want to, uh, you know, call somebody who knows about decent work for all and economic growth. Who can talk about just a simple line, what is decent work for all, according to you? Anybody raise your hand? Why decent work for all and economic growth of SDG 8 is being the agenda? Anyone? I think I can go to my deputy head, <laughs> Dr. Rajan sir, yeah, I pass this mic, I'll probably I call you here sir for a minute, please, can I call you for a minute, no, no, it's okay.
even in South Asia, 120 million people became lost their job. An equal number of people went to below poverty level because of unemployment. So it's not sustainable economic growth. Many governments have to bring the stimulus packages and arms. And definitely, when we talk about decent work, we all know in what conditions people work, not only in India, but all the countries in South Asia. And especially, it's more difficult when it comes to Canada. Thank you. We would be just highlighting uh, we this decent work for all and economic growth. It's it's a great highlighting. The pandemic has led to the loss of equivalent of 255 million full-time jobs. Economic recovery is underway. The global real GDP per capita. I'm just talking about 2017 to 2022. It's really gone down, but for many countries, economic growth is really expected to return to pre-pandemic levels only in 2022 or 2023. We have international tourist arrivals fell from 1.5 billion in 2000, 2019 to 381 million in 2020. So international tourism is not expected to return to 2019 levels for up to four years. And 1.6 billion in formal economy workers who lacked social safety net were significantly affected by the pandemic. We have a pandemic will lead to an increase in youth not employed in school or in trainings. So 31%, 31% young women and young men, 14% rate of the youth not in education, employment or training in 2019. So it's, it's the graph of promotion, sustained, inclusive, sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. I really wish that we would be all together create this platform of economic growth and decent work for all for India, having raised the bar and definitely we are going to create more than Mission 100Ks all together in the world. Are you there? I'll be coming to goal number 10, reduce the inequalities. This is really important. Financial crisis is reversing and reduce the inequality within and among the countries. I'll be coming to goal number 11, that is sustainable cities and communities make cities safe to live. Please everybody, I really request everybody, please consider this request, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable because the pandemic has worsened. I have given all the graphic figures also. In case anybody wants, I can provide you this presentation personally. The pandemic has worsened the plight of the slum dwellers. The majority of more than 1 billion slum dwellers reside in three regions. 16% the average global share of urban area allocated to streets and open public spaces and 156 countries have developed national urban policies. Only half are in the implementation stage. It's really worsened, but yes, uh, yes, yet to achieve. Goal number 12, responsible consumption and production. Goal number 13, we need to ensure climatic action, very important, straight from the heart. All of you, aren't you? Yes. yes, yes. See, I have given you all the senses here. It's take an urgent action to combat the climate change and its impacts. The climate crisis country continues like largely un unabated. Like I have given 2020, the global average temperature at 12% above its pre-industrial baseline. Then the rising greenhouse gas emissions. You can see the towards the car, carbon neutrality, the ages 2019-20, then climate, climate finance increased 10% in 2015-16-17-18, reaching annual average of 48.7 billion. So I think let's take an action and Dr. Rekha, I'm looking forward.
we are coming to 14 life below the water are you aware of life below the water yes yes, yes. Who, who experienced it anyone wow okay what well, can you just share with me And uh, that place is famous for its corals, coral reefs. And I got the chance to do scuba diving. And that was the first time I really enjoyed the life below water. It was like a curtain opened up and it was so colorful and beautiful. It was amazing. Then another time I got the chance to hear about life below water when uh, Bruce Spargo, a friend of mine, uh, he is into laying the deep uh, cables in the seabed. When he was sharing his experiences and I had invited him to uh, my school to uh, you know, enlighten my students, that was again an uh, amazing experience to hear his tales like below water. Thank you. Use the ocean, sea and marine resources for sustainable development. Life on land. I think we all must have something to say. Life on land. Anyone, Dr. Dr. Hawa Muhammad, I like you to put a light on the life on land. Can you pass the mics, please? Yeah. Because if there is no life on earth or on land, then it, it says no, it's going to grow. For example, the agricultural. It needs life, the earth, and the earth needs the agriculture because it's like intertwined. It's just like a husband and a wife. Without one, it's hard to, you know. But even though we're going into a world that we need women, we should be independent, we can live without men. But the reality is, you always need that support in hand. So that's just it. Just like we're supposed to take care of the land, so is the land supposed to take care of the life on it. So life on land is really, we have to restore, we have to create that breathable space. We have to make it like breathable, we have to make it livable, both for the animals, because they, they, they are like, both for the humans, they are like, they are little, little insects or life that we don't see that are living on the earth's surface. So it's important to like, whatever we do, we have to look at how to make sure this land is suitable for every living thing so that we can have a better world, better atmosphere because the more we create a bad atmosphere for the land, then it's going to turn somehow. We've been um, experiencing a lot of earthquakes across the globe from Istanbul to uh, places in India, I think for the past almost one month we've been having some magnitudes here and there. So it's important, it's just like if we look at 40, 50, 100 years back, we don't experience such things more. Because at that time, people, our forefathers, value everything that has to do with life. They nurtured it too well. But right now, we're, all, we're looking at, okay, these lands are for. There is, it's not habitable. How much plant, um, the tree planting have we been doing of recently? People are cutting down trees, making the animals homeless. So we need to take care of our surfaces to be able to have a better life. Thank you. Thank you. So let's gear up everyone. Let's save our land. Let's save our soil. Let's save our water. Let's save our environment. That's the message for all. We would be highlighting goal number 16. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. So we all are here. We all believe to have promotion of peaceful, inclusive societies for all. To provide the access to justice for all. And build effective accountability and inclusive institutions at all levels. Do you agree with me? Do you all agree with me? 
Really? Yes. Okay. So any message from anyone for in support of peace, justice and strong institutions? I'd like Mr. Yadbala to share your thoughts on peace, justice and after that I want my son Mr. Ibrahim Suwet. They all are my great family. A big fat family I have not only in Nigeria, Lagos, Canada, California. I think many more flags will be getting raised very soon with your kind blessings. Yes. First of all, I want to say uh, peace comes from acceptance. When you accept who you are, first of all, we are all humans. Uh, we need to treat ourselves as humans. If we treat everyone as humans, then everyone is going to be um, satisfied and accommodating with you. So peace comes from the inner mind. When you have uh, when you have these chills in, in your inner mind, then you have peace with family, with friends, and everyone around you. And talking about justice, when you uh, when you help someone who is not uh, when you help someone who can't help his or herself, you are giving them justice to be able to voice out um, themselves or showcase themselves to, to the reality of the world. Helping those who can't help themselves is giving them justice. And also, um, when we talk about peace, peace uh, got across religion, ethnic groups, and also um, where you come from. So that is peace. Helping each and everyone you meet in the possible way you can. Thank you, Mr. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Yeah, I would like to, uh, you know, listen from Mr. Here and there, 
what is not, uh, uh, upset in that is lack of justice. If there is justice, this uh, conflict might not, this war will not be fought. So because of lack of justice, that is why everybody, they will be superior among the other group or among the other person, like the superiority. So in that aspect, no one can, uh, everybody can come up with all his might and fight for his freedom. But the justice is the key. With justice, then peace will reign within the world and also many people will live harmony. Because the world is like one family. But absence of peace would destroy everyone. So that's what I would say a little bit when I would uh, add in this regard. Thank you so much. We are powerful leaders, incredible, unstoppable. Yes? All right, so we'll be coming uh, to goal number 17, that is strengthening the means of implementation and revitalizing the global partnership for sustainable development. I'd like to just, uh, just off this information that nearly half of the global population, that is 3.7 billion people are still not online. It's irony. All right, so we'll change it, no worries. We would, we have buddy system in India, you know, you understand my buddy system? That the people who are sitting, you know, behind you or just adjacent to you or just at the back you, just ask them, do you have WhatsApp? Do you have, are you there on Insta or LinkedIn? Do you have profile, do you have your professional network in LinkedIn? So can I connect with you? Alright, so we can, we can all together in this particular arena can create this figure of minus 3.7 billion people coming to the great plus points. Right? We'll do it. We'll have buddy system everywhere. Right? Create your buddies and create India, the online digitally certified world. Alright? We really want Indian flag to raise in all the arenas of the world. Do you believe that? Yes, we'll be coming to the last but not the least. SDG 18. Alright, so what is SDG 18? You know there are not only 17 goals. There are, so, uh, do you agree with me Dr. Rajan sir? We have 18 goals. We always miss the 18th one. Do you understand? How do we miss the 18th one? What is the 18th goal? It's not mentioned. Let's not mention it. Any one of you, what is the 18th goal? Yeah, please, can you just pass the mic? Yes, Mrs. Smith, I'm going to implement the rest of the goals. Yes, to implement the rest of the goals. Let's have a round of applause for our Mrs. Smith, a little relationship coach. Right, so we'll be coming again. It's coming uh, with a big banger. We'll be coming to the next slide. I just want to give you a runway now. Our brand ambassadors from the world. I'm really blessed that the team is increasing day by day. We have 160 plus ambassador. I think the big Indian map and the world map would be there next time in my progress report. Okay, so do you please give me a ball and a blessing. <laughs> Global Foundation, uh, Jagrut Abhiyan for the breast cancer. We have detected having patient testing, 100 plus women got detected and we saved the life in the first stage of the breast cancer. We'll be coming to the next media coverage slide. Yes, again, next. Coming to next, yes, we have the coverages national, international level. We also celebrated the first International Leadership Week in 2021. The topic was learning from the world leaders. I think the world leaders map is there. We have calendar shoots on SDGs, peace in sustainable development goal with all the countries, with World Humanitarian Organization and peace. Next, we'll have women's health also advocating for all overall well-being international virtual Zoom meetings in 2021. We have World Peace Day, peace through the sustainable goals. We are, I was the moderator, have moderated more than, more than 40 plus countries. <laughs> it was a big, big, big thing. First time moderator.
moderating so many advocacies. All right, so next we have the virtual Globe Economy Pick Championship also in 2021. We gathered all the categories: running, walking, yoga, bodybuilding, powerlifting, dance competitions. Or uh, you know, it's it's a global level. We have done it. We have achieved a big number. Uh, yes, the LA Global Foundation have been there in ANI News for the breast cancer awareness campaign. Yes, we, we did have LA Global Foundation Charitable Trust completed the pilot project for girls in menstrual health hygiene campaigns. We distributed more than 2,000 reusable napkins to all the government schools. It's a reusable, uh, it's a very organic way of using the sanitary napkins and it's, it's do not have any polymer. It has wood work, good for hygiene and we, we have given all the knowledge World because the polymers, you, you understand the polymers, it's really harmful for the environment. It cannot decay like 200, 300 years also, but this is from the very natural way of making reusable napkins to save the, the hygiene level. Yeah. Yes, next we have the mission Nari Shakti. We got a great, great support from Railway Ministry also uh, for women empowerment, uh, you know, programs. We have done all the campaigns. We have done, uh, yes, Sharda was also been there for the global uh, uh, calendar show for SDG. Yeah. Yes, it was the interview round with RNN, one to one. Yeah. Next, yes, yes, yes. So you can see the girls raising their hand. They felt so good having the hygiene level of, you know, uh, you know, uh, awareness sessions, especially because good health is being the foremost step of everyone. We have the campaigns to donate. And that's Atam Nirbhar Bharat India. I got some appreciation for We Think DJ. So I just want to share with you. These are the team of the youth who supported LA Global Foundation throughout. Thank you. Right, so conclude it for now and yes we are the resource center i always say we are the resource center of la global foundation we've been looking many more hands volunteer be a part be a supporter be a contributor and you know be our leader right so you all are there right so many more gala things are arising uh big uh, mementos are waiting for you all i am also looking forward thank you all for your patience Letting us know what LA Glow Global Foundation is doing for me, for us, and for everyone. And now I should invite Sir, who is already aware that I'm going to invite him now. <laughs> so, a person who is just clapping and enjoying the complete presentation. So, I would request Sir to please come and say a few words and share your thoughts and ideas. So let's give a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Oh. Please, sir. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare. О Магьяна Тимиранда Сяя Гянан Джана Шалакая Чакшур Милитам Геннад Асмай Шри Гора Ленамаха Транслейшн I was born in dark of the science but by mercy of my spiritual master I have got divine vision which helps me to go my life to life so so we have this book which is called Bhagavad Gita as it is and uh, during the previous presentation, we have got some knowledge that this La Global Foundation has particular roles and uh, they produce particular uh, magazines and newspapers and they provide uh, some programs and so on, so I would like to speak about this. And uh, because it is my privilege now to act as a representative of international society for Krishna Consciousness, so likely 
it is expected that I will be covering the religious aspect of our subject matter. And uh, one of these goals that were mentioned here on the screen, it was peace and justice. And today I would like to speak about peace and justice. And the Mataji who spoken before me, she told that we should be unstoppable leaders. Unstoppable leaders. And of course the higher leader, the supreme leader, is Lord Shri Krishna and he is unstoppable, which is known through very well known Bengal proverb Krishna Mare Rakheke, Krishna Rakhe Mareke. It means Krishna Mare Rakheke. If Krishna decided to kill someone, no one can protect him. Rakhe, no one can protect him. And Krishna Rakhe Mareke, it means if someone decided to protect, if Krishna decided to protect someone, no one can kill him. So he is an unstoppable leader. And leader means someone who is leading others. So leader, it means someone who knows the path. Huh? So Krishna gives the path. Not only Krishna gives the path, Jesus Christ gives the path. And, uh, 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 and others give the path. And uh, in this Bhagavad Gita, the principle is described how this path is Given Paritranaya Saduna Vinashaya Chatushkritam Dharma Samsthapana Kaya Sambhavami Yugi This verse from the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. By the way, my friend Abiram Govinda Prabhu, he has brought few copies of this book, so you can get it, and uh, those who cannot get it, they can go to Gasiabhatis Kong Temple and they can get these books from there. So, Paritranaya Sadunam, it means it is one of the goals why Supreme Lord comes on this planet. He comes in order to re-establish religious principles. That's why we have many different religions. Christianity, Muslim religion, Vaishnavism, etc., etc. But there is one common principle which is uh, exactly about this peace and justice subject matter, which was mentioned in the previous presentation. Peace and justice. And it means that the Supreme Leader is Krishna or Jesus Christ or whatever, anyway, higher personality, Supreme Lord, He is a uh, higher leader, the highest leader, Supreme Leader. And uh, uh, it is His natural position. So in order to maintain peace, ordinary living being like we are, we should not imitate Him. And it is described in Bhagavad Gita in the verse number 5.29. Bhaktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshvaram Sukridam Sarva Uttanam Yatva Mamshanti Mrichkati So we have three aspects in which ordinary living being can imitate Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the first one, Bhaktaram Yagya Tapasam, it means that all Yagyas and all Tapasas, all activities that we are doing, they are meant to satisfy Supreme Personality of Godhead. Any religious person understands it. Uh, those who follow Christianity, they know that one should serve the Supreme Lord. Those who follow Muslim religion, those who follow Vaishnavism, etc., etc., they understand this principle. This principle doesn't belong to any particular uh, religious confession. It is universal principle. Bhakta Rabhyagya Tapasam. He is Bhakta. Krishna is Bhakta. Bhakta, uh, it means he is enjoyer, supreme enjoyer. And as soon as one is trying to enjoy, Instead of Supreme Lord, he becomes corrupted leader. He becomes one who is exploiting his subordinates. Yeah, he becomes one who is corrupted leader. It means we are working together, but ultimately it should be dedicated not just to the leader of such and such corporation or company. It should be dedicated to Supreme Lord. Otherwise, false ego of this big boss will become bigger and bigger and everything will be corrupted. This boss will be corrupted and his subordinates will not be happy. Because we only can be happy if we uh, offer our endeavors to Supreme Lord. It depends on which uh, religion we follow. We can belong to any religion, but uh, the principle is that we should dedicate our efforts to the Supreme. Sarva Loka Maheshwara. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, it means that everything belongs to him. He is higher proprietor. And again, this feeling that I am the master of situation, or these people, my subordinates, they belong to me. And I'm doing with them everything, whatever I want. It corrupts everything. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram means 
if I have something, I have this mic. This mic is given for me just for a few minutes to speak. I have this gross material body to work also given for me, to me, just for a few decades to live with it. Everything is given just for temporary usage. But ultimately everything belongs to Supreme Lord. Again, we are not speaking even about Krishna consciousness. We are speaking about universal religious principles, which are manifested in different traditions. Sukridam Sarvabhutanam, it means that he is the well wisher of everyone, of each and every living entity. And as soon as one who is, has big position, he thinks himself that he is ultimate well wisher of his subordinates, then again, false ego is flourishing. I am so nice, I take care of them, uh, especially if we are speaking about charity, about charity. So, Someone is doing charity and he enjoys that I'm so nice person, I donate so much. But in Bhagavad Gita, in the same Bhagavad Gita, different kinds of charity are explained. And the highest kind of charity is when one doesn't enjoy it, when one uh, just does uh, charity out of duty because it should be done. Because it should be done. So in such a way his false ego is not involved in this process. Bhaktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Sukridam Sarvabhutanam Yadva Mamshanti Mrichkati and Yadva Mamshanti Mrichkati If one follows these three simple principles Principle number one, I will repeat again Principle number one uh, Everything should be dedicated not to ourselves It should be dedicated to Supreme Principle number one Principle number two Everything belongs to Supreme and whatever we have here, it is just for temporary usage. And principle number three is that ultimately the well-wisher of all living entity is Supreme Lord and no one else. We can take care of other people. We can take, but we are just acting like mediums between Supreme and these people. We are trying to act like this. Otherwise, if we think that we are so nice, then, okay, everything is corrupt. But if we follow these three simple principles, then Yatvamam Shantim Richkati, it means that this peace, this uh, tranquility, this uh, uh, everyone, uh, all, all people becomes, become pacified. Everything is good, everything is in harmony and peace, which we actually uh, are trying to achieve. So it is about the principle of peace and uh, justice. Peace and justice which was mentioned in the previous presentation. And those of you who want to know more from Bhagavad Gita as it is, with bona fide commentary given by Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, those people can just approach to Abhiram Govindu Prabhu and get the copy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much for your attention. which our team solved under the guidance of Dr. Minakshi Sahani. Today, we both are feeling so happy and proud to share the third edition of our global magazine, Sovergin Powerhouse Success Story. And I want some fuel, so can I have a big round of applause? Thank you so much. And for the same, I would like to invite uh, Sir, again, you, that is Madhav Burani Dasji. It's really a proud moment for all of us to see. Let's thank everybody. This is yes. 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 Yes.
big clap for our efforts of power house presentation i should say because this magazine is full of power house success stories also see the man here dr rajan today yeah <laughs> big clap we have father from italy is also our one of our we have gargos farm the lady the she's a farmer women but she'll be here in some moment joining us we have dr reka It's an employment opportunity available to a person 
wherein one can do a job with dignity. Uh, in Indian constitution, if I can refer to whatever fundamental rights uh, have been mentioned, uh, it is always necessary that one has to have a dignified life which is protected as a fundamental right in Indian constitution. And I believe if I refer to other constitutional democracies in the world, this is uh, an essential thing which has to be there. In India, if we look at even the people who are in employment, who have jobs and who can sustain themselves uh, by, by doing some work and who can sustain their families, but the kind of uh, dignity which is, uh, which is expected is mostly not there. So, the, the dignity is, uh, uh, is uh, something which has to be maintained if you are working in uh, such conditions which are not conducive to have a good life, to have a healthy life and which is uh, disturbing you and that is how we find in today's time the kind of issues that we face uh, with regard to mental well-being, mental issues in our institution also we have all such kind of societies we are in the need to appoint the counsellors who are looking into such kind of issues, uh, the, the mental issues, the mental well-being issues with which uh, the people are suffering. So we have to have a, have a society where these issues are either not there or they are there at the minimum level. So jobs have to be there uh, which will help a person to earn at least that much that he or she can live a decent life can have a dignified life and as far as economic growth is concerned this is again when we talk about economics economics is something where this one thing is related to the other and if i again refer to the, the peace and the world peace uh, firstly this uh, covid 19 disturbed the entire world and thereafter uh, we can see the kind of problems which are happening between russia and ukraine on one end and then now between hamas and israel on the other end and today's world is completely global we cannot say that this is something which is uh, happening far uh, from our boundaries and we are not affected and the, the, when again we talk about economics the kind of import and export all other things the employment like if middle east is disturbed so it is a sad news for india because lots and lots of people are working in the middle east uh, countries so the indians there similarly uh, so 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 all these things we need to take care of and uh, economic well-being is uh, possible only when there is peace there is tranquility and when we all have uh, some kind of sensitivity to the others we feel that others also exist and they also have the same rights as we have so if we invite these kind of feelings and if we work with this spirit then i believe the world will be a better one in future thank, thank you sir thank you thank you for your thoughts definitely i i really believe uh, the, the peace begins when Uh, misunderstood word of our scriptures 
Varnashram system. Whenever we say the word Varnashram, it is quickly uh, correlated with the caste system, racism and all these things. And in fact, to explain that thing, Nana Krishna explained in the further chapters and the translation of that verse goes like this. One should follow his dharma. I will explain the word dharma. One should follow, keep following his dharma and act according to it, even if he is not able to do it perfectly. Instead of following someone else's dharma, very perfectly. So, that is the instruction given by... So, what is the meaning of dharma here? So, how? The particular connotation of the meaning of this word dharma here is so how? One should follow his or do or engage in such type of employment which is according to his sobha. And one should not deliberately or uh, I would say Javardasti try to fit in somewhere where he actually doesn't fit. But who will decide or how is it ascertained? What is the sobha? Right? So in various civilizations throughout the world, this problem was being tried to solve. How? This can be solved. So somewhere there are you know, pure blood kind of thing, blood lineage, somewhere there is jati, somewhere there is you know, in, in our scriptures varna. But from leader's perspective, from someone who tries to engage someone somewhere, this problem is, I think, is it is my opinion, it's it still unresolved, unsolved. Because everything cannot be written, everything cannot be you know, made like a constitution book and you know, this is the checkpoints and follow this and you will be able to engage. That's where a human touch is required. That's where a human become a leader. A normal person become leader. He has to have two things, a vision for what kind of world, world he want to see and then a kind of, I would say, empathy or this kind of uh, johari ki nazar ki uh, what is the nature of that particular, this, that particular guy or that particular girl because from uh, spiritual point of view, from spiritual point of view he is or she is conditioned in his other pit it is the job of a leader to bring him or her out of that pit and for that he has to see, he has to have that vision of uh, seeing the quality, the nature, the sobhav and the vision for, of the world. These two things is required. Then only I think he will be or she will be able to as a leader provide the fair opportunity of employment for everybody. Otherwise, we what we are doing, actually there are so many works around everywhere. What we are not able to have is us uh, giving a sense of satisfaction to everybody that yeah, you are in the right place and you can thrive here. Right. So th this problem is addressed and I know it like, like this. Ki one should first of all be engaged in such uh, employment or such place which is according to his sobhav. Then it's just, just one more. Just one more. Uh, particular shloka I want to uh, discuss, I want to just start. That is Karmanya Vadika Raste Mahaphaleshu Kadachana. Very famous shloka, everybody must be knowing it, right? And this is also one of the most misunderstood shloka. When one engages someone in some place, you know, the, the dissatisfaction nature of human is always there. You know, he, he, nobody particularly who is conditioned, nobody is satisfied with his environment or circumstances or anything. How this satisfaction will come? So leaders generally say hey, just keep your work doing and don't worry about the uh, results and everything but if someone think like this he can only become labor. He can never become leader actually. He can never become leader if somebody doesn't think about the result and everything. So what does this shloka mean then? Do we get Result ke baare mein hi No, it doesn't mean that. This shloka results into the very famous concept of karma yoga. What makes someone 
a yog is what he is looking in his job what he is trying to find in his job whether he want to find uh, some result of his great lust power or something or he want to find the god there and our acharyas previous acharyas have shown it by their example they have found god in their job through their job i want to congratulate all of you that you know some sometime you know business log businessman log ka thoda sa guilt rehta hai ki are we really doing you <laughs> know so we 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 need the uh, leaders in development yeah. and uh, we be trying to uplift uh, the goals right uh, बट जस्ट लाइक है ना एवरी एवरीवेयर देयर इज सम इनपरफेक्शन सम जुगाड़ सम झोलमोल तो सबको थोड़ा सा गिल्ट रहता है कि है ना आर वी रियली डूइंग गुड और आर वी रियली हैविंग सो व्हाट इज द सॉल्यूशन फॉर दैट दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग या इवन कृष्णास अंडरस्टैंड दिस हियर कि इन एवरी ईच एंड एवरी एस्पेक्ट सर्टेन डिग्री ऑफ सिंस और पाप इज इनवॉल्वड you cannot avoid hai na even if you try to follow all the protocols all the constitution law everything it is simply impossible it is simply impossible but but make some path, some work pure is the intention what you are looking at the end yes. what you are trying to find out through your work thank you guruji thank you and that is all. thank you thank you Thank you. Good afternoon. I will be short because I have spoken for a long time. But but we all love to listen, Imad. We yes yes yes. I love to speak too. <laughs> uh, but much has been spoken. Uh, and I will focus on women in terms of old age. And if you look at the condition of the women and uh, some of the Indian and colleagues from Africa will associate. because most of the developing countries and the least developed countries the status of women is same many of you would have heard or would have been doing what is called the monthly task women by birth are attuned to multitasking and especially in india bangladesh and other countries with the migration of male from the rural areas to urban areas the entire agriculture world been done by me so she is a employee she is a laborer she is also a mother she is also a cook she is also a cleaner she is also a wife she is also a daughter in law and many other things this is multitasking and most of these go into unpaid care economy which basically means this work this hour this economics the calculation in rupees or in dollar does not get captured into country's economy or gdp and this is the biggest challenge and since we do not have that evidence it is very difficult for even the government or the policy makers to come out with certain policy interventions which can help empowering women and creating a decent environment for working and let me share some of the statistics which is for india and this is come this is by the ministry of micro small and medium enterprises when we talk about women all the time you will see the women are employed in the lower value chain labor wage household unpaid white collar job yeah we have three four iran yogi and others who claim themselves to be the champion and we all boast that women empowerment has happened but if you look at the lowest of entrepreneurship is micro where between male and female the female participation as entrepreneurship in india is only 20% if you go higher up which is more economy 
to be small, only 5% of that sector belongs to women. And if you go to medium enterprises, it's only 2.6%. So micro, which is just kind of a household, you have a maximum presence of women empowerment. But as you go up the economic ladder, the participation of women is declining. So when we talk about women economy, when we talk about empowerment, when we talk about all these interventions, decent work, where is the opportunity for them to be provided? I was discussing with my friend who is the next panelist, I mean from the bank, how much problem women entrepreneurs face in getting the finances? Because most of them are not eligible to give any collaterals because either it is on the name of their father-in-laws or their husband or their son. Indian law allows women to inherit property of parents, but socially it is not given. So she doesn't have. So there are many challenges and I am really happy what it talks about over 70 partnership, collaboration. And that is where I really admire Minakini's effort. Advocacy is one of the very, very important components of delivery. Monitoring is fine, but somebody will have to advocate for this. And now, Global Foundation, I'm very happy and that is why we got associated. Because it also champions for the cause of you to achieve STD, because they are the ones who can do a proper advocacy with various government at local level with the state government with the municipal corporation and so uh, the other thing of partnership people from different diverse background area you are networking we are gaining knowledge from each other sharing of some good practices from each other to replicate in our fields and our areas that is how we can collectively work towards a prosperous global Thank you very much. Thank you for my, my favorite topic that he has touched my heart and like I am feeling very moved and inspired by this work. <laughs> and I think all the women here. Yes. yes. So where the yes is so slow down, Doctor? Yes. I want all the women, we all are women and he spoke, you know, the exact topic that we are looking that is must and must. The women empowerment is the process actually by the women strengthening their capacity and individually and collectively. You believe me? Yes! 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 yes. yes. Yeah, Mr. Yadbala, you really believe the women empowerment. What is the process of the women empowerment? How probably if you would be the peacemaker and you will give you a task for 1,000 plus women to get empowered, then let's we like to listen from you what you what action you will be taking. Yeah. Can we have the mind? Or no, no, I just invite you. Just a small word, like if I want to give a task to Ibrahim, like you know, having 2,000, 1,000 women to get empowered, what kind of a process you like to have so that just share with us? Um, first of all, I will engage them on skill acquisition so that each and every one of them can work independently and enter themselves. Okay, alright, thank you so much. I'd like to call uh, Mr. Yat Bala. Okay, Mr. Omar, Mr. Omar, I'd like to give you the task to empower the women. Sir, we can give them the task to empower the women, right? I think 1,000 plus, so this means we have 6,000 plus women get empowered by the entire, uh, my family, my Nigerian family, right? You can, can you empower 5,000 plus women? Yes? Are you sure? Ready for the task. Okay, so we will be having uh, Mr. Ravi Kaushal ji, uh, the Chief Man uh, Manager, State Bank of India, putting his thoughts on the topic, session one. Yeah, actually, uh, as you started, the employment opportunity. So, previously also, uh, I have 
decide on that uh, we should be rather than employment seeker we should be employment giver so that approach should be there in the minds of uh, women as well as the men for the next 10 years to come and before that because we were discussing about the sustainability to let us understand that sustainability is all about uh, as uh, our friend from uh, Krishna consciousness they rightly said the God has kept it as a beautiful art and this art has so many natural resources on that and since then right from the 20,000 years back we have been eating this as like anything and there are two types of natural resources on this earth one is perishable and that can be reduced another bit that cannot be reduced means God has given us only once if we finish it God has nothing more to give it to us so Sustainable goal, like 17 meters described to us, it is means it simply means that all those resources which are renewable, we should focus on those goals only. And since we are talking about the employment opportunity or maybe the business, what we'll be seeking, so we should focus on industries which are coming in the next 10 years. So this is the time we should focus our attention on this traditional businesses to the renewable businesses. That is the need of the hour and I mind you, I can assure you and I can guarantee you if you invest or maybe employ in such type of industry which is focusing on sustainability of renewable energy, then obviously you may survive or sustain for the next 15 years I can assure you. You might have heard recently the COP28 is going to be organized in the November in Dubai. So all these countries will be coming up and there are around 2200 countries on the earth. They will be coming together and they will be taking the oath with the commitments that yes, what we are doing in this sustainability. So I will highlight you in India, from India's perspective, there are four types of industries which are just coming up and blooming in the next 10 years. Uh, probably if you employ, if you seek employment in that or if you invest in that or maybe try to start your venture in that, probably you will be benefiting your country as well as yourself. So the first thing is the solar. Solar everybody is talking about. So we are also financing the solar. Solar you can put it, there are two types of solar. Uh, you can put it on your rooftop. Means if the roof is available on an industry or even a household. If you are owning a house, you can put your solar, you can reduce your thing. And solar on the ground. The ground also if it is available to you, we are giving to the farmers also. Those farmers, it is not cultivable land. The barren land if somebody is available, they can put the solar plant on that. Another thing is the biomass planet. I think before coming here, everybody might inhaling the very polluted air. Air quality index is more than 300 or 400. That is not breathable for the normal human beings. So the, now the business opportunity is coming from the biomass planet. Means the culprit is because so many farmers, they are also helpless. They are just harvesting their paddy field. So the paddy field, what are the remains are there? They are burning it and this is creating the pollution. So now the business opportunity is biomass pallet. You can compress those uh, paddy and you can form in the form of a pallet. So there are 20 thermal power plants of NTPC. The earlier was it was applicable to those only power plant, but the, now the government has made it mandatory, the Ministry of Power, that all thermal power plants in India, they have to use 5 to 7 percent of biomass pallet as a fuel. So this has created a industry of 1 lakh ton per day. One ton is 1000 kg, I am telling 1 lakh ton per day consumption. So you can think of a market. So this is a very good business opportunity you can invest in that. Third one is the compressed biogas. Our aim should be, because all are burning the fossil fuel, this is the main culprit for increasing the carbon emission of the, it is simply the carbon oxide which is increasing the atmosphere, it is increasing the temperature and another important point I like to highlight that because 15 or 20 years back we used to listen that so many European countries they were protesting when the, we can see in the Italy, Spain, France, people are sitting on the road simply putting the uh, hand on their mouth, they are not talking and then stop pollution and stop burning the fossil fuel but now the time has come because what we were anticipating because of the carbon emission, the scientists were thinking okay, the temperature of oceans will be rising in 100 years by 0.1 degree Celsius. Eventually, the recently the study which I have conducted, 
the rise has the, the, the temperature of oceans have rise by 0.1 degree Celsius within the last 30 to 25 years. So that's why you might have seen sudden increase in Boston and in India itself, the one month the hurricane comes into Risa coast and in the another month it immediately touches the Gujarat coast. We are seeing the difference in monsoon also. The monsoon also it is extending. So the things which we used to think, now it is evident. So now it is the time to reduce the fossil fuel. So the compressed biogas, it is another sector which somebody can invest in that. In the compressed biogas, what we do, the all the biomass, we just decompose in a uh, digester and we make a uh, compressed biogas. So that is a very good substitute for CNG. So our all the automobiles, they can be filled with CNG. And you might have seen the electrical vehicles also the government is promoting. This is another thing, you can go and see the opportunity in this. And uh, last but not the least, the ethanol. The ethanol also government is giving very much importance uh, impetus to ethanol so that it can be blended with petrol and diesel. So my request is all these sustainability goals it is working on that. So if you are seeking great opportunity as well as you want to invest in these industry, I can assure you you can sustain there and you can flourish in these industries for the next few years. Uh, species 
that we know to in here we know as nari or you know, woman but those qualities are actually divine qualities that need to be worshiped by everyone we i see ki you know ye nahi hota hai you na know, some and you know, i some pretty some women get senses or some so, uh, we generally go for the idol worship uh, what i recommend you know, for real women empowerment we need to you know, in every house in every where we need to worship these qualities so as soon as we worship th- these qualities we will def- automatically begin to respect and worship the the holder of those qualities we will automatically bring in uh, those uh, the holder of those quality on the table to solve the to get the problem solved we will automatically bring it everywhere every aspect of our life so this is how this is how the you can go thank you so much
Thank you. 